All right, great. My name is Matt Dunleavy, and uh, I'm a professor at Radford University. I teach educational technology. Uh, and for the next 10 to 13 minutes, I'm going to be uh, sharing with you some work that uh, came out of a National Science Foundation grant that we have. Uh, but basically, we're going to be talking about augmented reality teaching and learning. For those of you who don't know what augmented reality is, you'll be, uh, if I do my job right in the next 10, you'll, you'll be leading experts in the next uh, few minutes. So the guiding question that I'm addressing is how do we enhance STEM uh, with a focus, how do we accelerate the focus on inquiry-based, project-based learning? As I said, it came out of a National Science Foundation grant, um, the product of which is we actually developed our own augmented reality development platform. And as I share a specific software platform that I'm going to talk about, I want you to think more globally. Think about how this emerging tool, because that's what it is, can be used across K-12, K-20 uh, to enhance teaching and learning. So the big question is, what is augmented reality? About five years ago, Hewlett Packard put out a concept video. And they, they coined it Roku's, Roku's Reward. And while approximately 50 to 60% of the technology in this video was unavailable or even conceptual in a lab at the release of this video, what, most of what you're going to see now is either in a lab and coming to market or is available now. So I want you to look at that. Your world is your playing field. And aside from the young woman or princess coming out at the end, and they're obviously targeting the young male demographic there, um, everything else in there, to a certain extent, is either coming to market or is available now. The visual recognition, the GPS, the compass, um, all of these things are now possible to a certain extent. So that's the future. I firmly believe that's the future of augmented reality. And specifically, that's a gaming scenario. But I think you can immediately see some educational applications there. So where are we now? Basically, an, a, a simple definition of augmented reality is embedding the physical surroundings with media that you view and interact with through your smartphone. As David Pogue said in Scientific Americans, a much uh, sexier definition is the phone becomes a magic looking glass through which you can identify physical objects and actually augment your environment. So we developed an augmented reality development platform called Fresh Air that basically consists of two pieces. It consists of a browser-based editor that removes all coding requirements and enables K-12 teachers and students and professors, non-coding people, to actually develop their own augmented reality and then deploy it to an Android-based phone or iPhone. And it incorporates location-based augmented reality, which is basically your GPS and compass. And it also incorporates vision-based augmented reality. We'll talk about that in a second. So how is this possible? Raise your hand if you have a smartphone. All right, everybody in, with your hand up basically has a GPS receiver in it, probably has a compass in it. Not only do I know where you are on Earth, but I know in which direction you're facing. So if you're walking past the Lincoln Memorial, I know that. And I know if you're looking at it, or I know if you're looking away from it. And therefore, I can push content at you depending upon that location. Most of the experiences that we developed are actually played in the physical environment. So think scientific inquiry, getting kids out into the environment to explore the environment, interact with each other. 
satellite shot of New River Valley, where I'm from. GPS tracks your location. Software presents interactive media. The other aspect of this is vision-based augmented reality. We're leveraging Qualcomm's Vuforia technology, where basically you point your smartphone at a two-dimensional image, such as a sign, and it presents a three-dimensional object on your smartphone, augments your environment. So just through those technologies, we can create interactive stories. We can create interactive uh, experiences where people meet characters. They can view videos and three-dimensional models. And they can also look at texts. And with those ingredients, you can create pretty much any inquiry-based experience you want. So here's reality. This is a shot looking off of Peter's Hall where I teach. Nice day. And here's augmented reality. Same scene through, seen through a smartphone, but now we have embedded media in the environment and you have a compass at the bottom. These are my colleagues and co-founders of the company that we formed. As they walk through the environment, they will see media embedded and as they get closer, the icon enlarges, the feet decrease, and when they come within 30 feet of that pre-programmed point, media will be triggered. In this case, they're getting their fingerprints analyzed because it's part of a secret agent narrative. They consume the media, their fingerprints are analyzed, it's just artifice, it's just a game, and they move on. So the browser-based editor, we wanted to empower people. It was, it was interesting to see programmers do this. We wanted to put this in the hand of K-12 teachers. So we built a, a browser-based editor. It pulls in Google Maps API, and when I click on a hotspot, I can embed this environment with any media I want, including assessments, multiple choice assessments, fill in the blank assessments, as well as uh, graphics, text, audio, video. When we built this, we had scientific inquiry as a major goal. So with that in mind, we, we embedded certain functionality that we knew could be leveraged to that end. So collaborative gameplay, it's a fundamental game mechanic of video games, but it's also a fundamental game mechanic or experience mechanic of inquiry. And Glenn had mentioned collaborative problem solving. You can imagine a chemical skill game where Jim, Tony, and Bob were on the same team, but they have different levels of expertise. One is an entomologist, one is a botanist, and one is a zoologist. So bugs, plants, animals. Now they may move through the same environment, but they'll see different pieces of information depending upon their expertise. It's a modified jigsaw pedagogy. The other aspect that we think sets it apart is dynamic gameplay. Here you have players choosing between two possible options. They can continue exploring by walking in that direction, or they can hide an object by walking in the other. Who remembers Choose Your Own Adventure? Choose Your Own Adventure, go to page 36, have this ending, go to page 75, have that ending. Basically, it's that on steroids. So you basically have, depending upon player movement and player input, you can have different experiences cascade in front of the player. I use the word player. You can envision student um, if you any experience you can think of. It's also place independent. Once we've developed an experience, we can immediately pick that up and we can drop it on top of a new experience. So for example, we can design a game for Raleigh. We can drop it on top. We can pick that game up, put it on top of Charlotte, put it on top of Greensboro, or Winston-Salem. It's a highly scalable model. So in essence, what we've designed is a storytelling platform. Just as all of us come into this room with hidden stories, some of them wonderful, some of them horrible, the physical place has hidden stories. This particular building, Red Hat's facility, sits on top of, I guarantee, thousands of human stories that will remain hidden unless we find a tool to reveal them. To a certain extent, augmented reality and development platforms such as Fresh Air give us a new way to tell story. So what does it look like? I'll close with a few uh, videos we're currently working with Qualcomm's Wireless Reach Project and Harvard uh, Graduate School of Education. Christidi's team up there is working with Amy uh, Camerainen. We're also working with a charter school out in San Diego. And I think uh, the seeing students use the technology really focuses on the power of, of what we can do with this. Here's some shots of kids at the San Diego Zoo basically walking around the exhibit. And here's some shots of the EcoMobile project up in Cambridge.
So you see students actually walking around the physical environment and interacting physically with the environment, but also with each other. I'm going to skip ahead, and for those, who's taught K-12, or who's a professor, who's actually tried to teach? So I want you to look at these faces and tell me if this is something that you would try to achieve in your classroom. And I talk about this a lot, um, but to be honest, this young lady captures for me the power of this technology in a better way. And we can test the water and the, and yeah, it's awesome. It's much better than using a textbook because it's you're in you're in it. You can you can see everything instead of just reading. And yeah. the questions are related to what you can physically do instead of just what you know from your knowledge. So when I so you know fancy academics such as myself, we call that immersion. Right, and experiential learning, authentic inquiry, but she really nailed it, right? It's, it, it's relevant to what I'm doing. I can actually physically interact with the environment. And basically, augmented reality is an emergent tool that will be a part of the K-12 toolkit. It's just a question of how it's going to be used. So that is the presentation. That's my contact information, and I'd love to work with anybody in this room, and I'll turn it back over to you, Jim.